Welcome everyone. I'm Ira Feldman. I'm the Managing Director of the TinyML Foundation. I'd like to welcome you to today's uh, TinyML Vision Challenge uh, platform discussion, where we'll talk about the Intel Luxanus Vision Platform. So welcome, a good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're connecting us for, connecting with us from. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Before we start, I would like to take a moment to recognize the sponsors who've made the Tiny ML Vision Challenge possible. We have ARM, Edge Impulse, IMAX, Intel, and Qualcomm as our executive sponsors, and Lattice, Pixar Imaging, and Syncense as our platinum sponsors. I'll talk a little bit more about each of them at the end of the presentation, but I wanna thank them for making the Vision Challenge possible and for their support of the Tiny ML Foundation. In terms of the Vision Challenge, I think most of you know, uh, but it's a collaboration with Hackster. We're using their contest platform. And the goal of the Vision Challenge is to focus on developing new use cases for Tiny ML Vision. And secondly, is promoting time, Tiny ML technology and companies in the developer community. Uh, the contest has been running for a little while now. We have, I think, 57 days until August 20th. So till the end of August 20th at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time, you may submit your uh, entries. Uh, if you haven't registered for the challenge itself, please do so. Haxter.io slash contest tinyml dash vision. We will take accept, uh, submissions until August 20th and winners will be announced on September 1st and we have over $6,000 in prizes. So uh, that's the big picture on the vision challenge. Today we'll specifically talk about a set of hardware and software to help jumpstart your development. Um, and in, uh, next Wednesday, we will have a second webcast on the IMAX and Edge Impulse Vision platform. So if you don't know where to start, don't know where to uh, do next, uh, we believe these two web, web, webinars will give you some insight as to some existing solutions to build your application on so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Okay, so uh, we have... The two presenters today will be Jay Burris. He is the Open Vino Academic Program Manager at Intel. He's responsible for letting people know about and engaging and providing knowledge about the AI toolkit that they call Open Vino that he will talk about in detail and also um, helping people learn about the Intel's new Edge AI certification program and prototyping ideas in the cloud developer environment. He's uh, been actively involved in the embedded automotive and internet of things space for over 20 years. And he is joined by Eric Kokal, who is a software developer at Luxanus, who is an enthusiast about open source software. So with that, I will turn it over to you two gentlemen. Thank you, Ira. Welcome, uh, I'm Jay Burris. Uh, like Ira said, I'm an academic program manager for OpenVINO. OpenVINO stands for Open Visual Inference Neural Network Optimization. It's an inference, uh, AI inference toolkit. And I'm joined by Eric, who's come from our partner company. So we've joined together to um, essentially bring you a joint offer with Luxanus Equipment and their Depth AI software platform that coupled with OpenVINO and our developer cloud environment will allow you to uh, to deploy a, a, a very low power vision-based uh, device. <clears throat> so your challenge uh, is really to create a proof of concept using machine vision for an embedded system to address um, an industry problem such as predictive maintenance, uh, disease detection, automotive or so forth. And what we're offering is uh, we have Intel has the Intel Developer Cloud or Intel Dev Cloud for the Edge, which is a um, cloud hosted developer environment where OpenVINO is installed, always the latest version. You get 50 gigs of private storage space. You can code directly there. You can also learn from Jupyter Notebooks. And then you can deploy 
to the Luxonis device, which is using the Intel Movidius Myriad vision processing unit chipset. Um, and this is an image of the Lux ESP32. You can see it's very small with the size of a quarter next to it. So, you know, computer vision and AI are really changing lots of industries, and you can see a host here. Intel plays in, in all of these spaces. Um, of course, Intel offers from very large compute, Intel Xeon down to through Core, Atom, uh, or Movidius VPU as well. Um, Movidius is really targeted towards very small form factor devices, but you could see them in a number of these verticals. The cities, for example, are facing new market pressures. Um, Intel is not just um, serving uh, the needs for, for cities, but it's a good example that encompasses a lot of different use cases. So obviously there's increased urbanization, there's uh, increased vehicle emissions. Um, we're now seeing connected vehicles come on the road uh, with autonomous driving, traffic is growing even more so now, now that the pandemic is receding in certain areas of the world. Um, and of course that's leading to new infrastructure uh, with road construction and so forth. So edge computing is really going to solve a lot of needs, being able to process data at the edge and react to it instantaneously. And the future of smart cities, for example, is really at the edge. Um, you can see there's a lot of data that's created at the edge. Over, over 16 zettabytes of data in smart cities are created. So from buildings, to smart buildings, infrastructure, public services, utilities, and transportation. This leads to really a huge market opportunity. 135 billion um, in global uh, smart city technology spending uh, by this year, uh, 328 billion over. Um, uh, Kager of growth and uh, 15x uh, shipments of devices for the edge. So we're seeing this massively increase. So why the Intel distribution of OpenVINO toolkit? Well, it's a high performance deep learning inference toolkit that's designed to streamline development for ease of use. And really it's a right once deploy anywhere. I'll explain what that right once deploy anywhere means. So basic the basic high level workflow of OpenVINO is you bring in a trained model, you find a trained model or you train your own model. So this is very much about inference versus AI training. You bring that model in and OpenVINO has two main components. There are some other additional capabilities with the toolkit to the side, but two main components. There's first you can run the model optimizer on the trained model that produces an intermediate representation of files called the .bin, the .xml. That, those two files are what really allow the Intel architectures to understand the, the model. After that, you can de deploy those files into using the inference engine. The inference engine is what gets essentially embedded in an application uh, so that, um, the inference is running all the time at whatever device you're deploying it into. And OpenVINO scales across Intel CPUs, such as Xeon Core Atom, also our GPU offers. So our discrete GPU from uh, that's Iris Max and our integrated GPU, which would be inside CPUs, that's the Iris XE architecture. The vision processing unit, Movidius, which is, is what I've squared here today, um, FPGA and the Gaussian uh, network architecture, which is for uh, speech and language. Oh, apologize for that. Um, Ira, by chance, do you know how I can get rid of this bar at the top? It just came down by itself. Um, it's um, not visible to us. That's so you can just move it, you can drag it to okay. where it's not blocking your view, but it um, it's allows you to see the app, but um, Thank you. it's not visible to the audience. Thank you for confirming me. Okay, so what I'd like to do is go in a little bit more detail with the joint workflow um, between Luxonis and Intel. Um, so the, the previous slide that I was showing you, we kind of at a, at a hundred thousand foot level said, you know, you, you bring in a train model, you use the model optimizer, you produce the dot bin and dot XML, you deploy that into an inference engine. Well, the, the workflow is slightly different with Luxonis because they've made it a little bit easier 
and because it's very much an embedded um, device with the camera. So first, what you can do is you can use our Intel Dev Cloud for the Edge. It's free to join, free to apply, 90 days of accessing, and you can always extend it. Um, you can learn with Jupyter Notebooks there. You can upload your models, your data set. You can code right in there. Um, and, and then you can essentially deploy to your host device. Now, we have a lot of pre-trained models in our Intel Open Model Zoo on GitHub for you to select from for things like object detection, recognition, semantic segmentation, and so forth. So you can choose a trained model and use the workflow in Developer Cloud. And then you, essentially you create an inference engine, network engine blob so instead of the .bin and .xml, those don't actually go directly into the Luxonis devices, but those are input into creating the inference engine blob. And you can use DevCloud to compile that. You can transfer it down to your laptop, and then you can use your laptop to transfer it into the Luxonis device, the Lux ESP32, which Eric will go over in more detail. But it offers a lot of capabilities. I'm really excited about this device because it's three cameras on one. So it's stereo um, depth camera um, perception. It's also AI capable because it has the Movidius Myriad chipset. Um, and you can also do uh, computer vision processing. You can operate it in standalone mode. So powered off of a USB battery. It has an ESP32 chip on the back of it. So it can do stand completely standalone, or you can connect it to like your laptop or some other single board computer through USB-C. Um, and there's, there are additional devices because it offers that ESP32, this version, you could do Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, for example. Luxonis has other versions that don't have the ESP32s, but we're um, specifically going to be talking about a discount today on this version. Now, the Myriad um, chipset is what Intel off, uh, it has sold to Luxonis, who's built it into their um, Luxonis camera components. It offers a neural network engine. It offers um, 16 programmable um, vector shave processor um, shaves, uh, 16 configurable MIPI uh, lanes for up to eight um, HD cameras. It's what Luxonis has enabled for stereo optic uh, capability. And it was really designed for advanced vision and artificial intelligence use cases like smart cameras, smart home security drones, and 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 uh, three, 360 degree cameras as well. Okay, so well, one question that came in specifically, you, you know, you're focused on the ESP32 and the features you've just talked about. Uh, somebody asked about the Oak One. Um, I don't know if you or Eric want to talk about the difference, but you know, I can speak and, to it. But I think in terms of the contest, people can use whatever hardware they want as long as you can show that it could be a battery powered application. And uh, hopefully you'll talk about the differences there. So Yeah, just briefly, um, like I said, Luxonis has a number of different versions. Eric will show them on screen. Um, the, the Lux ESP32, we're offering a discount up to the first 50 applicants. Um, and it, it's highly tuned towards uh, battery capable because it can offer the standalone capability with that ESP32 in addition. Uh, but the Oak One is a single camera and the Oak D is a, is a stereo um, optic AI camera with, you know, so three cameras, but that requires connection to say a single board um, computer through USB-C. You could use any of those for, for the contest. Mm -hmm. So the OpenVINO core components uh, model optimizer, it's a Python based um, tool. Uh, you would either use it in the dev cloud or you can also download OpenVINO and install OpenVINO on your laptop. You could use a, a Linux or a Win10 based laptop. Um, you use the model optimizer to convert it to the intermediate representation. The inference engine is really the API um, suite that you compile into an application. Um, the Intel Dev Cloud for the Edge has Jupyter Notebooks, and I'll switch there in a few moments to really show you um, how you can learn from them and how an inference engine um, is, is constructed. Under the hood with OpenVINO, um, left side train model, or pick one from the OpenVINO model zoo. Um, then we've kind of covered over the, the, the IR um, format. There are additional tools, though, as part of OpenVINO, so post-training optimization, 
where you may have an FP32 uh, model and you want to downgrade it to FP16 or int8, you can do that. Um, we also have Deep Learning Workbench, which is a GUI-based tool. You can use um, post-training optimization through that, and it graphs it for you and compares the accuracy of the model previous to, to post-training and post. Um, OpenVINO combines OpenCV and OpenCL for this advanced computer vision uh, capability. Deep Learning Streamer is really about building um, a an advanced pipeline of audio and video capability with, with inference built in. And then we have code samples and demos. And how the OpenVINO works with all these different architectures is, is it chooses a particular uh, plugin to work with, with the specific type of architecture. And that's how we've essentially enabled the right ones deploy anywhere. It's just about changing which plugin you wanna to choose to deploy which, uh, to which device. We offer a lot of support for different frameworks. So natively, we support TensorFlow, Cafe, MXNet, Kaldi, and then there's the Open Middle, I'm sorry, the, the Open Neural Network Exchange, um, which in, in itself, Onyx offers an, a bunch of other frameworks. So if you wanna use one of their frameworks or their models from their model zoo, you can, you, you can convert it to the Onyx framework and then run um, Onyx framework natively with OpenVINO. A lot of different pre-trained models and public models available um, for you to choose. So for your challenge, um, you're really looking for a model rather than trying to start training your own model, which you're more than welcome to. But if you really want to speed your time to your development, you can choose one of the um, 100 plus uh, pre-trained models and public models available. Uh, we also have dem demos and reference implementations for things like um, if you wanted to do intruder detection, um, so essentially um, human detection. Um, restricted not zone notification is, is similar, um, but you can do bounding boxes, so you can do advanced computer vision um, capabilities there. Um, you could, if you're wanting to do something like parking lot counter, you know, identifying vehicles, so there are lots of different demos, so you can you could go there and analyze the code and try to reapply it to your own use case. I'm gonna pause for a moment because it looks like there's a question that's come in. Um, Eric? Yes. Hey. Um, so I, uh, I think I heard the host say there's a discount on the Oak D. Where do I find this information? Uh, so it's the discount on the um, LAC CSP32 this device. And we'll wrap up this presentation today talking about the discount. So the Intel Dev Cloud for the Edge, how it works is, is it's a cloud environment, but physically there are a lot of different host devices in the cloud for you to run inference against. Um, like I said, we have all these different architectures that OpenVINO supports. So Dev Cloud offers offers equipment essentially connected to the dev, dev cloud for you to deploy your application to that you would compare the results to. Now, specifically for this challenge, we're encouraging you to focus on Movidius, but the dev cloud offers this capability with OpenVINO installed um, where you, know, you wanna get started and you wanna learn more about OpenVINO, there's the Jupyter Notebooks there. So, so this is the home screen for the Intel dev cloud for the edge. If you just Google Intel Dev Cloud for the Edge, you will find it. Um, the best place to start here is the Learn tab. Now, there are a number of um, things to, to learn from here. So we have some standard tutorials, which I'll go to in a moment. And then we have more advanced sample applications. These are all instrumented with Jupyter Notebooks, where you have uh, narrative uh, text explaining what's going on with surrounded by uh, embedded code, which you uh, can modify, but you can execute. That's how a Jupyter Notebook works. So if I go to tutorials, there are a number of tutorials available in here. You can learn some, from some of the advanced applications, but to start with, there are um, several starter um, tutorials. So object detection, style transfer, and then this one down here called classification are the sort of starter tutorials that we have. We also have tutorials where you can migrate from the edge 
or migrate local to the edge. And that'll be important if you want to use DevCloud to start your development, and then you want to transfer down to your, your laptop before you're wanting to transfer into the, the Luxonis um, uh, depth AI camera, you'll want to be able to use this so you can follow this tutorial on how to do this. Object detection. I'm going to open this tutorial up and sort of give you a, um, a walkthrough of this tutorial. So you'd start it, um, a Jupyter notebook uh, will launch. And so you can see how there's a lot of text that's explaining what's going on, um, talks about the prerequisites. So these files are already resident uh, in this particular Jupyter notebook. And then it goes through the introduction of how OpenVINO works and the pre-trained model that's being used, MobileNet SSD, the key concepts. Here's what we've already learned today about bringing in a trained model using the model optimizer, creates the IRs, inference engine, and user application. Um, talks about the inference engines and plugins. And now it talks about uh, the inference engine API workflow. Um, how OpenVINO works is if you, you embed the inference engine inside of maybe a larger application. And in fact, think even bigger, you may have a containerized environment with lots of different applications. So you may have lots of different applications with inference engines built into that. Um, but let's just take, for example, one. So the standard workflow is load the plugin, then you read the model from the IR files, you load the model into the plugin, um, the plugin is, is essentially referencing which architecture you want. You prepare the input. So each uh, image or the stream of images is partially the input. And the model will expect the input to be in a certain way, um, height, width, um, uh, and in terms of uh, the colors, um, RGB. Uh, you run the inference, and then you'll process the output. Now this Jupyter note will will talk you talk you, and walk you through sort of this process. This is like the section of in, of preparing the inputs, and really it's saying you're going to have a um, a particular uh, image and you're going to resize using OpenCV and the the command. So maybe it it started with um, width and height, and you need you know you need to change it to height and width or the reverse. You can change the layout with transpose, and you can resize it, and you'll do that because the model that you choose, you go, if you go to whatever model you choose, maybe from the, the open model zoo, the documentation will tell you what that model expects. You'll also import some standard modules that are needed. So like Python modules, the OS, open um, CV model, um, the time. Uh, time's important because you're doing um, inference and, it, and in this particular use case, you want to know how much time it takes to do the inference. So you'll input that and you can see this is executable code. So you could actually run it and there it went. So imported Python module successfully. Um, here's a section where it teaches you how to create the IR files using the model, um, the model optimizer. So you're um, downloading and converting the model that you get. So it downloaded the model net SSD and the converter um, converts that and produces the output into a location where you specify. Um, more on configuration. So configuration parameters that you'll set. So here's executable code as well. Um, and Further down, then you create the, the um, inference engine instance. And you keep going with, with creating the network. And I'm, for the sake of time, I'm going to speed through. So you'll essentially, this particular Jupyter notebook will talk, talk you and walk you through the whole flow. Now, in this particular use case, this is going to run an inference on a on a, on a car, an image of a car. And ultimately, it will do a uh, bounding box um, around the car and the uh, license plate. In addition, in this Jupyter notebook are additional uh, exercises that you can run. So you can run your own image. And it walks you through how to do that. 
You can run that locally. You can upload the image to uh, the, the Jupyter Notebook and you can run inference on a video. So a, essentially a video is a stream of images. So that's how, how um, the dev cloud works uh, for Jupyter Notebooks. Um, now I'm going to uh, pass it off to Eric. Um, so thank you, Jay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Eric, and now I will present to you the Depth AI platform, which is an embedded, performant, spatial AI and CV solution. So let's start with why we created this platform. Uh, we wanted to have a solution that encapsules three of these technologies. So spatial sensing, which can be done with um, disparity depth, LIDAR or potentially radar. We wanted to have the ability to run um, AI on the device. So uh, to perform neural inference uh, on the edge and also uh, have CV. So for example, feature tracking, motion estimation, uh, edge detection, and so on. Um, it would uh, have to be embedded and performance system. Uh, so a small light, cheap device uh, that wouldn't consume too much power. Uh, and we found out that there was no such a platform available uh, to have all the requirements above. So we created one. Um, and on the image, you have the uh, Lux uh, ESP32, uh, which you can see can also be battery powered. Uh, so an, is, an existing solution for our project would be to have a Raspberry Pi model three or four uh, to have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. Um, we would need a um, Raspberry Pi camera module or a USB webcam and use that video stream to feed to an AI um, processor, uh, for example, Intel's neural compute stick. On top of that, uh, we would also need a stereo depth a sensor preferably since it's usually cheaper than a LiDAR solution. And as you can see, uh, this, this would be bulky, would require more power consumption uh, and would also need, and we would also need to buy all of these components separately. So we have uh, consolidated all of these features into one simple to use platform. Um, so uh, what's Eric, inside the- we have an open question. Uh -huh. Yes, go ahead. So the question is, is it possible to use TensorFlow Lite for micro framework with this hardware? Um, TensorFlow Lite, yes. Uh, it, I, I believe we, we, you could uh, compile it into Onyx and then uh, convert it into uh, OpenVINO format and then into the block. Uh, so what's inside the depth AI? Um, we have two stereo cameras um, on the left and right uh, with synchronized global shutter uh, with, with a resolution of 800p. Other specifications are on the slide. I'll just go uh, to them. Uh, there's in the middle, there's a color camera that can uh, stream 4K video. It's usually used uh, to feed um, into the neural networks. In the core of the device, there's Intel's Myriad X visual processing unit, VPU, VPU in short, which can perform four trillion operations per second, tops in short. And last but not least, there's an ESP32 <laughs> on a Lux ESP32 device. Uh, you guys are probably more familiar uh, with this module than I am, but in short, it has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi uh, connectivity. It, it has low power consumption, plenty of interfaces, and it communicates with the VPU uh, via the, the SPI. So all of, these, all of this combined can provide uh, this result. So the spatial location of the detected objects. So here we can see the chair and the person and the uh, coordinates of those. On top of that, we have an open source software, hardware, and AI training notebooks. So for the hardware here, uh, you can see uh, 
So for example, on, on the left side, it's the power over ethernet devices. Then we have the ESP32. Um, we, uh, we have the Depth AI device with integrated Raspberry Pi compute module three and four. Um, we have the Depth AI with flexible uh, cameras and our most popular OD and OQAN in the bottom right corner. We also have a rich set of open source software. Uh, these are just some examples. Uh, so just to name a few, um, body pose estimation, sign, sign language uh, interpreter, face recognition, license plate, OCR on the device, uh, and social distancing, and so on. So let's go back to the um, features that we required, and I mentioned spatial AI, but what actually is this? Um, so it's the capability to get neural inference results in physical space. So for example, you can get X, Y, and Z locations of all ripe strawberries in real time. This can be used, for example, in conjunction with a robotic arm, so it can pick up uh, ripe strawberries. So with fusion of AI, CV, and disparity depth perception, the, uh, this device can give us 3D position on the detected objects, uh, features, or uh, semantic labels. And what is great is that you can run any OpenVINO compatible model. So as Jay mentioned, you can run any model from the OpenVINO model zoo directly, which is over 200 models. Um, and uh, on, on next slides, I'll present to you just some popular um, uh, new, neural inference examples and their use cases. So first of all, we have object detection. So the model detects the object and provides a bounding box. Two of um, the, the most popular models here are YOLO and MobileNet. Next, we have um, models that can detect faces, facial landmarks, exp expression, um, pose and age estimation, and face identification. Um, there are vehicle detection models and models for license plate detection. And, and you can also use, um, you can also run OCR model to read the license plate on the device. We have pedestrian um, detection models, some of which can also do read notification. We have text detection and optical character recognition, so OCR in short. Um, semantic segmentation. With our device, uh, you can also fuse this segmentation data with the stereo depth. We have pose estimation, uh, and you can get 3D coordinates uh, for pose landmarks. Um, stereo neural inference, um, which you can see on the slide. So it performs the neural inference on both left and uh, right camera and then triangulate the results uh, that, that you get uh, to the 3D coordinates of the object or uh, landmark. Uh, next is our open source software that you can find on GitHub. So this is just one example. Um, you can run complex pipelines and run neural network models in parallel or serial. So um, this example, we are first using a uh, face detection model, uh, crop the image of the face and perform both head uh, pose estimation and uh, landmark detection uh, models in parallel, and then use both of these results to estimate the gaze trajectory. So this is the result, as you can see, the gaze trajectory from Eric, four models. We ah. have a question. Go ahead. So can semantic segmentation technique be used to determine the size or proportion of an object in a scene? Yes, if we would use it with in combination with depth, you could you could do that exactly. Um, so um, next we have C plus plus and Python API parity. Um, and we provide many examples, example pipelines for both. We have ROS1 and ROS2 uh, integration, Unity plugin, and wealth of other 
uh, reference pipelines just to get you started as quickly as possible. So uh, Jay presented to you uh, the Dell Cloud and the um, object detection tutorial. And here I'll uh, show you how to use uh, that model from the tutorial with our platform. So first you will need to pip install the blob converter. Blob converter is uh, our tool that lets you convert or compile models into the blob that is required by our device. Um, next, we can use the blob converter and uh, with the model that was downloaded from, from the Intel's model zoo. So uh, that was the mobile net SSD. Uh, and we can compile that into the blob. We can uh, download the blob with file link ju just so it's easier to, to download. Um, so we can use it with our platform. These are the, the steps required on the slide. Um, so, and to run the example code, uh, you can use the DevTI demo application. You need to copy the downloaded blob into a specific folder. So DevTI resources and then mobile net SSD. Um, and then you can uh, run the DevTI demo Python application with the arguments to use the mobile net SSD model. And here's the end result. So this was uh, taken in the morning. And now let me try to do a uh, live presentation. So here is the model that we have. Um, it's in the Depth AI resources and then mobile net SSD. I copied the model. Here I am in the Depth AI uh, repo folder. And if we start this application, Python Depth AI demo and specify the mobile net SSD. Hopefully this is, will, will work. Ah, here it is. Okay. This is the um, the depth screen and here's me with a bottle and you can see the spatial coordinates of bo both of the bottle and me. Let's go back. And now just for the end, our um, office hours. So um, we, we have a discord um, server that link is uh, on, on the slide and I will also um, print it on, on in the chat. And we have uh, the, the office hours um, 6th of July at 9 a.m. Uh, European time zone and 20th of July at 7 p.m. Uh, thank you everyone. So now I will uh, uh, we'll let Jay uh, to, to end our presentation. Thank you, Eric. Um, so I'll just move these windows. We don't have any open questions right now. I showed you the Intel Dev Cloud for the Edge um, before uh, Eric presented. Let me see if I can drag this bar. Okay. Um, I also wanted to show you the Open Model Zoo briefly. So on GitHub, if you just uh, Google Intel Open Model Zoo, you'll find all of our um, uh, pre-trained models um, available. So the Intel pre-trained models and public models, you'll find more information on the model downloader. Um, model downloaders available inside OpenVINO and of course inside the Dev Cloud for the Edge as well um, to streamline. So when you install OpenVINO, it doesn't it doesn't install all the models right? because that would bloat the size of the, the install. You pick and choose which ones you want to download. I also want to point out that Intel has a brand new Intel Edge AI certification program. Um, if you want to advance your career or you're just wanting to uh, learn more about OpenVINO, we actually have instrumented um, this um, certification you'd get at the end, an Edge AI certification badge. It's $99 for the badge, but you can take the training for free um, if you want. And um, you'll learn essentially about OpenVINO, you'll learn about DevCloud, and you'll also go through three um, Jupyter Notebooks, the object detection, the classification, and the style transfer examples. Now, for the moment you've probably all been waiting for and you want to know more about. So we are um, 
part uh, together, uh, Luxonis and I, and actually this is largely uh, Luxonis's offer, but they are offering a 50% discount on the Depth AI Lux ESP device to the first 50 project idea submissions. So it's limited um, uh, while supplies last for the discount. But really, what we're asking is for you to provide a description of a real world spatial AI computer vision problem uh, and propose the solution. Use, using AI, so using the, the OpenVINO toolkit, uh, essentially um, using the instruction that we've provided you today about uh, building in the network engine blob um, into the, the spatial depth camera and also incorporating um, depth sensing. There's uh, a number of suggested areas that you could focus like uh, road safety, um, retail in terms of maybe something if you want to enable frictionless checkout experience, something for logistics or education or healthcare, uh, monitoring um, uh, your, your own health or maybe for something like a care facility. Um, something related to COVID, social distancing, mask monitoring, um, and also because the Lux ESP has the the um, the ESP32, it actually could support a micro ROS on there. So if you want to even go further, you could try to do a robotic implementation. So to apply for the fifty percent fifty percent discount. Um, uh, submit your project submission uh, to this location. Um, it's also listed on the TinyML um, Challenge website. Um, you must be registered for this Tiny ML Vision Challenge to qualify for the discount, and the first 50 project submissions will qualify. So we're coming to the end of our presentation. What will you create? Uh, is it going to be something retail? Is it going to be something safety and security? Something for the environment? We are super excited that you're part of this challenge and we look forward to your submissions. We really want developers who want to um, try out this uh, Lux ESP32 device and the Depth AI platform using OpenVINO. We're um, and anxiously awaiting your, uh, your solutions. So um, essentially, thank you. Um, good luck. Um, we look forward to helping you along this process, and now it's time for some last-minute Q&A. The, the power consumption of the device is um, about 3 to 4 watts, something like that, uh, on, on a running uh, device, so not, not, an, not on an like idle. A, a fully stressed device as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But, but there's a low power state, correct? That you can correct. trigger based upon your application so that should give you a longer battery runtime. Exactly. Correct. But the, the huge advantage of the of this particular device is that you know it can be run in standalone and you, you power over USB battery. You can certainly um, explore uh, options in combination with a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi or, or something else. Um, but of course, your total solution there would you 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 did increase your power consumption. Re related to this, um, uh, I don't so, know. Go ahead. So for the idle, it's about I, I believe uh, zero point five watts to to one watt something something like that. So does the ESP uh, serve any purpose here? Um, yes. So for example, you can run it without a host. Um, the the Lux ESP32, and you can send the metadata results from the, the VPU to the ESP32, and then do some sort of post-processing if you need that, and then later upload these results to a, uh, for example, a cloud uh, a AWS or something like that. So you can use it, for example, for people tracking, um, just use the metadata to send it to the ESP32 and then upload it to the cloud. What types of camera interfaces are supported? Um, I'm not entirely sure what, what do you mean with that? We well, have, the, device, so we have... the device itself really is, I mean, Movidius it supports the ISP, but it's already um, 
connected on the platform, on the Lux ESP32 um, platform to the three cameras. Um, then the if you're wanting to run it, um, you're not assuming you're not running it in standalone, you're connecting it through USB-C to some other device. That would be um, how it would be supported. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Um, is it possible to get shape uh, data from uh, LAX ESP32, that AI eager contours from shapes uh, to infer volume? It would be possible, but it's currently not yet supported out of the box. But we are slowly um, getting there with, with the features. So also does Intel on the edge dev cloud support model training? No, uh, the Intel dev cloud for the edge is, uh, is where OpenVINO is installed. Um, OpenVINO is an edge inference um, toolkit. There are OpenVINO training extensions. You can Google that. Um, but really the workflow um, that we described today is you bring in a, a train model. You could use something from our open model zoo or train your own model. Um, you may train your own model in sort of like a, 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 another cloud environment um, uh, uh, and then um, use that train model with the Intel dev cloud for the edge. We've got two more questions there. Um, what are expansion possibilities for IO? So on the LAC CSP32, there are yeah, about uh, 20, 20 pins exposed that you can connect. Uh, for th there, there are um, some number of interfaces, um, for example, SPI, UART, something like that. Uh, and also the the GPIOs um, from the device itself. Is it possible to change the lenses on the board cameras mainly for shorter working distance? Um, so for the ESP um, uh, um, ESP thirty two device, uh, it is possible, um, but uh, Arducam supports uh, these devices, and you can use, for example, the devices that have. Um, uh, different um, frame of view uh, um, for uh, the, the um, fisheye lenses, but we, we do recommend uh, using the LUX, um, uh, the, the flexible cable cameras. So you can directly connect uh, with the camera that, that you want. Um, does it run any RTOS, is inference time available anywhere? Um, what exactly runs RTOS? So you can run the RTOS on the, the ESP32 itself. What do you mean on the Mirrored X, the VPU? Inference time available anywhere. Um, I think the, the, I mean, the, the answer to the, it does not run at just any R, R, RTOS. It's it's a stable environment provided with the DEP AI. However, mm -hmm. you know the general like Oak D and Oak One and and this in the terms of the camera capabilities, the ESP32 separately um, would sort of be the standalone uh, and that the environment the, that you would use with the with uh, ESP32. If you do a connection through USB C to a single board computer. That single board computer is where you know you like a Raspberry Pi. Um, you know you you might be choosing um, uh, Raspbian or whatever single board computer you're running. Is the inference time available on the device itself? In DevCloud, we do provide the inference time readout, so you can determine how your your model is performing. Um, but Eric, is inference time available through the um, camera? 
uh, you could stop watch it on the host itself. So so see how many FPS you get with with some model and um, get the inference time that way. The link for uh, next week's uh, webcast for the HiMax and Edge Impulse uh, Vision platform, uh, which will be Wednesday, June 30th at 8 a.m. Pacific time. I've just put in the chat for people who want to register. We will also post that on the contest webpage and send out some email. So uh, once again, I'd like to thank uh, Jay Burris and Eric Koka uh, from Intel and Luxanos for a great uh, presentation today. Uh, we look forward to doing more of these to help jumpstart your creativity so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel to put a great application into the vision contest. Um, once again, I'd like to thank the sponsors of the vision challenge um, and I'll walk through them really quickly. Uh, Arm, the Software and Hardware Foundation for TinyML, uh, Edge Impulse, uh, TinyML for all developers, uh, HiMax, always on ultra low power Edge AI, uh, Edge, as we, uh, excuse me, Intel, as we heard today, with their Open Vino mod, uh, platform and support and having a complete solution with like the Luxanus and other platforms. Uh, Qualcomm AI Research, Advancing AI uh, Research to Make Efficient AI Ubiquitous. And I'd like to thank our platinum sponsors, uh, Lattice, Semiconductor, Pixar Imaging, and Syncense. And I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. And we look forward to uh, having you join us next week and at future TinyML events. So thank you. <laughs>